Hi, my name is Matthew Libby. My pronouns are he, him, and I am a 2023 DGF Playwriting Fellow. I used to act out uh, stories in my family's living room when I was, like started when I was like six years old. I would have these, like got really obsessed with Lord of the Rings and acting out these like multiple part fantasy epics in my living room that my parents uh, started affectionately calling Matthew World. Um, and uh, you know, my parents at a certain point um, basically forced me to start recording um, these stories. It was first on uh, uh, you know, little tapes and then eventually I started writing it down so I can really credit my parents for uh, nurturing that storytelling instinct within me and taking what was kind of chaos and, and making me put it down on paper. Um, so I guess that was the start of it all. There was a period when I was like 13 years old where I was really, really obsessed with uh, the writing of Aaron Sorkin. Um, specifically, I was really, this was like right around when The Social Network came out and then I was also getting really into The West Wing. And so I was really, really in love with Aaron Sorkin's writing. And around that exact same time, I got introduced to the, or a couple of years later, I got introduced to the writing of Annie Baker. Um, Annie Baker, who, if you know her work, is could not maybe diametrically opposite of Aaron Sorkin. Aaron Sorkin's all uh, witty, fast-paced dialogue, whereas Annie Baker is, is a, a, a lot more based on silence than a lot more on what isn't said. And I found myself really falling in love with both of those kinds of writing. For me, the kind of umbrella that unites those two writers is that they're thinking about how language functions in time. Um, and so yeah, I think a lot of my work these days can kind of be divided into like an Aaron Sorkin mindset and like an Annie Baker mindset. I love fast-paced uh, melodic dialogue. And I also love playing with silence and playing with kind of bolder theatrical conceits. And again, it was this period of time in my, in my kind of middle teenage years where they both entered my life in roughly the same era. I've been developing uh, actually two plays um, uh, as a fellow. Um, the first is a, a sci-fi play called Sisters. It's about a young girl in an artificial intelligence program who are raised as sisters. Um, the play takes place over the course of 90 years. It's, it follows the human sister's entire lifespan. Um, as a two-hander between uh, uh, the, these two sisters. The central conceit of the show is that the actor playing the uh, AI sister never appears on stage. She has an offstage voice the entire time. And so there's uh, the idea is, can you make the audience invest in this relationship, which is real and dynamic and spanning decades, but uh, one character is never on stage. Um, and the other play I'm working on is a play called Data. Um, Data is a tech thriller set in Silicon Valley at a, a kind of a Palantir style Silicon Valley tech company, a da data mining company, and it follows the young entry level employees of the company as they start to realize the kind of true nature of what their company does, um, sadly is uh, very relevant these days. I'll shout out um, my local coffee shop. Uh, there's a, a pie shop in Gowanus where I live. Uh, called Four and Twenty Blackbirds um, that serves delicious pie but also delicious coffee. Uh, they're right around the corner from my apartment, and so the, t the past you know year or so they've been uh, my main office <laughs> uh, in terms of yeah I'll go there and, and, and write most days and get a cortado and it's just, it's a really nice environment and um, generally pretty quiet and you can get a lot of good writing done there. I like um, completely switching up my frame of reference of uh, uh, my frame of mind. I uh, am a bit, I'm big into puzzles. Um, I do at least three crosswords every day and I'm also a big Sudoku fan. So um, typically when I sometimes get stuck in the kind of mire of, of writer's block, it's um, sometimes really nice to go to something a little bit more analytical, something where I know there's a solution to it. Um, and uh, switching up that frame of mind can sometimes make it easier when you go back to the creative stuff um, uh, uh, to kind of, you know, maybe discover something new. But yeah, that's, I do a crossword or do a Sudoku. That's typically what I do. The first one that comes to mind is a play called Far Away by Carol Churchill. Um, it's been my a, a obsession of mine for a very long time. It's about 20 pages long and in, in performance runs about like 50 minutes to an hour, but it does more in those 20 pages than most plays can do in like four times that length. It is a, um, the opening scene is one of my favorite pieces of writing ever. It's a very quick read and will make you think, I promise, Far Away by Carol Churchill. Um, then also The Flick by Annie Baker. That is a play that uh, uh, really did change the way that I think about theater and what theater can do and what it can be. I was lucky enough to then see it a couple years later after I, um, after I read it off Broadway. Um, uh, and 
Yeah, I think it, I think it's just a, it's it's stuck with me, you know, even a decade later, um, just as a, this example of of letting something kind of exist in quote unquote real time, not theater time, and and the ability to kind of control time on stage in the way that she does um, has was you know really inspirational to me at the time and remains a kind of really constant inspiration. This is more, in some ways, more of a directorial. Um, choice because it's not in the actual text of the play, uh, but there was a revival of, um, of *A View from the Bridge* uh, about a decade ago here in New York, directed by Eva von Hove. And um, at the very end of that play, when the kind of violence reaches a climax, um, it starts raining. It, in that production, it started raining blood um, uh, onto the stage. I was also sitting on stage in that performance, and I was really up close in the uh, to the action. In that moment where it started running, uh, raining blood was just such a um, a powerful theatrical conceit to, to demonstrate what was happening in the story that it, it was the kind of one of the first moments I can remember um, as a theater viewer where my jaw dropped um, and I still think about that feeling uh, uh, you know to this day. <laughs>